Hello and welcome to another episode of 10 Questions to MRCOG Mastery. In this video, we are focusing on abdominal incisions. As an obstetrician and gynecologist, you are a surgeon and you need to know your incisions and need to know how to choose the correct incision for any given operation. This requires good knowledge about your abdominal surgical incisions. Let's get right down to it. And I will make this lecture very incisive. Question one. What are the key principles you need to be mindful when you consider abdominal incisions? There are four key principles for you to be mindful of. The first is that the incision should give sufficient access to perform the operation in hand and also allow extension if necessary. The second principle is that the muscles in the way of the incision should be split in the direction of the fibres. The third is that the incision should not divide nerves. And finally, drainage tubes should be inserted via a separate small incision as inserting them through the main incision will compromise the healing of the main incision and could weaken the scar. Question two, what is a vertical midline incision? Well, you know the answer. The incision is marked A in the diagram. It can run along any length of linear alba from the siphoid process to the symphysis. It can be above the umbilicus, below the umbilicus, or indeed both above and below the umbilicus, curving around the umbilicus itself. This is an excellent incision if substantial access to the abdomen and pelvis is needed, as in, say, cancer surgery. It also avoids all major nerves and vessels and muscles. The downside of this incision is that it heals slowly and has higher risk of wound dehiscence and incisional hernia. Question number three. What is a paramedian incision? This is marked B in the diagram. This incision can run any length from the costal margin to the pubic hairline vertically, about 2.5 centimeters away from the midline. It is no longer commonly used. We will now look at lower abdominal incisions, including Fenin steel incision, Joel Cohen incision, Shoney's incision, Maillard incision, and Rutherford incision. We will finish off with incisions that are needed for laparoscopic entry. Great. Question four. What is a Fenin steel incision? This is marked C in the diagram. It is a transverse incision, slightly curved incision, about two centimeters above the pubic symphysis. It is about 10 to 15 centimeters long. It is what we commonly use, don't we, for cesarean section and for gynecological um, laparotomies. The trouble with this incision is that it doesn't give good access to the pelvic side walls and the upper abdomen. Question five, what is Joel Cohen incision? This is marked D in the diagram. This entails a straight transverse incision through the skin, about three centimeters below the line, joining the anterior superior iliac spines, and about three centimeters above the pubic symphysis, if you like. So it is a slightly higher incision than the Fenin steel incision. It is faster to perform than a Fenin steel, and so it is useful for, say, emergency cesarean section. There may also be less post-operative pain associated with Joel Cohen incision compared with, say, Fenin steel incision. Question number six. What is a Maillard incision? It is another transverse incision. It is marked E in the diagram. 
it is about 5 to 8 centimeters above the pubic symphysis. The key step here, though, is that we cut the rectus muscle transversely to give wider access to the pelvis. It can be useful for gynecological cancer surgery. Maillard incision gives better access to the abdomen compared with other transverse incisions, but it is still not as good as a vertical incision for access. Question seven, what is Schoeny's incision? This is marked F in the diagram, and as you can see, it is a very low transverse incision. The key step here is the transection of the rectus tendons close to the insertion, followed by upward retraction of the muscle. This can allow the surgeon to perform procedures like birch colpus suspension by accessing the space of retius. Space of retius is, by the way, a fancy name for retropubic space, the space between the pubic symphysis and the bladder. Question eight, what is Rutherford-Morrison incision? Now remember, there are three broad types of incisions, vertical, transverse, and oblique. Rutherford-Morrison is an oblique incision marked G in the diagram. It is generally used for bowel or renal surgery. This incision can also be particularly helpful in accessing the ovary or the adnexial, uh, or adnexial masses in the second half of pregnancy. Question nine, what are the access locations for laparoscopic entry? There are three you need to know, all marked on the figure. A is umbilical point, and this is the commonest entry point for laparoscopy. The second is Palmer's point, marked B in the diagram, which is three centimeters or two finger breadths below the left subcostal margin in the midclavicular line. This is an excellent entry point in those with previous midline incisions. The third is Li Huang point, marked C in the diagram, which is halfway between the xiphoid process and the umbilicus along the midline. It has a higher position which makes it ideal for paraaortic lymph node dissection. Excellent. We are right onto the very last question, question 10. How long do surgical incisions take to heal? Generally, they take about two weeks, but sometimes longer if the incision is complex or the patient has comorbidities like diabetes. So that is 10 questions on surgical incisions, 10 questions for MRCOG mastery. Let me wish you well until we meet again on another video or perhaps at our weekend intensive fun-packed MRCOG revision course. Have fun with your revision.